Hey guys, it's Stephanie. So I've just been sitting here talking to my laptop thinking I was recording. And I wasn't. So anyhow, um, a lot of people have asked me questions about complications I had. They don't want to scroll through my hundred and something videos, which I completely understand. Um, so they want to know more about me and like what my process was, what kind of complications I had, because they're a little concerned when they go in for theirs. Now, mine are completely uncommon. Um, this doesn't happen to everybody, so keep that in mind. I There's like a 10% and you always think that you're not the 10%. But unfortunately, I was. It seems like I always am the 10%. <laughs> I don't think luck is on my side, even though I'm Irish. Um, no. My name is Stephanie, um, also known as RNY Steph. I was 27 when I had my surgery. I was 250 pounds, and I had gastric bypass on November 18th of 2009. Um, I am now going to be 30 this year, so I'm almost uh, two and a half years post-op. And basically what happened was they had never had a surgery before in my life, so I was extremely nervous. Um, had the surgery, came out completely like in pain from the gas, so they gave me immediate you know, morphine drip and I was knocked out again. So they brought me into the room. Um, I woke up and my family members were a little concerned because m my heart rate was at like 150 to 160 lying still. And it pretty much stayed at that level. Um, even while I was sleeping, it was at that level. I think my nerves were just going crazy. And so I started to panic. Um, doctors and the nurses kept coming and checking on me, like, why is your heart rate so high? Clearly, I had tachycardia. So, which is where your heart rate's, you know, at an unnormal high beat. Um, so the doctor took me in for an exploratory surgery. Now, I'll remind you, I am, um, there's like a 10% chance that people get like what I got or what, or what I had and stuff, and clearly you don't go in thinking you're the 10%, but I was. And I seem to always be the 10% in all my surgeries, so I pretty much expect the worst, and if I don't have it, then I'm like, whew, thank goodness, you know? So, anyhow, so I went in and I, um... They did the exploratory surgery, but before that, they had given me one, uh, one thing of, like, you know, the, like, mouth swabs, like, ice chips sort of thing, but it was, like, it was actually ice chips, I think. They gave me one thing of ice chips, and that basically was too much for me with the second batch of anesthesia, because I had to be put under again. They were going to go in, make sure there was no internal bleeding, because I started getting hiccups. And that doesn't feel good when your stomach's been just recently caught. Um, so anyhow, they go in. When I'm put under for the anesthesia, the second time, and I, as I was falling asleep, I remembered starting to say that I started feeling really nauseous and dizzy. Well, apparently the moment I conked out, I threw up while I was lying on my back. And I aspirated, like, basically inhaled my throw up into my lungs which is disgusting I know but it's called aspirating into your lungs and that is a form of pneumonia when you have fluid in your lungs so I came out um, nothing was wrong it's just that I am naturally an anxious person and this was my first surgery so my heart rate was high because that I was scared um, but unfortunately when I came out there was they tell me, okay, yeah, nothing's wrong with you. Well, that's great news, except now I had as, or, um, pneumonia. So they start giving me, um, I was supposed to be in the hospital for three days, um, two nights, and I was in there for seven days, six nights. Um, they started giving me this antibiotic for the pneumonia. I did a million x-rays. They came in with this big old x-ray machine. I'd have to sit up and they put like big old cold metal things behind me and roll me into this one room. I had a CT scan done, which wasn't comfortable when I had cords sticking out of me everywhere from IVs and whatnot. Um, the antibiotics they were giving me was causing me to throw up. So then they started coming and giving me reg Reglin, which is, I guess, to keep you help with the nausea or something. Um, I, would, I got a fever 
so they had to unfortunately give me a suppository of Tylenol, which was not pleasant. Um, I'm trying to remember, sorry. And then they thought it was right around when H1N1 was going around. Well, because I was throwing up because the, the antibiotics were making me sick, they thought I had H1N1 because I was like, I caught a cold while I was in there, which I didn't have H1N1, by the way. So I catch this cold and they're like, oh my gosh, you know, she has H1N1. So everybody had to come in with like these big old huge looking covers on them with masks and stuff. It literally looked like my family was in big old bee suits, like they were bees. I don't know, they were bright yellow and really, really awfully ugly. Um, anyway, um, so and like face masks and gloves and the whole nine yards. It just couldn't, it was, it was crazy. Well, I didn't have H1N1. I just was getting nauseous from everything. So I was constantly throwing up from the medicine. Then the Reglan they gave me, they would come in every night, which I think is normal, and they would give me a shot of, I think it was Levinox or Levinox. I'm not sure how you say it. But the stuff that helps keep you from, your blood from clotting. And then um, I was released on the seventh day. Immediately had to go straight to my surgeon's office and get my stitches or my staples taken out. Those were taken out, uh, you know, the first week I was supposed to be on liquids, second week of mush. Well, second week rolled around and I couldn't keep even liquids down. I was just throwing up everything and everything and everything. So it turns out that I had stenosis, which is a form of scar tissue that builds around, well, it's, it's when scar tissue builds up from a surgery on your pouch. So my pouch, you know, is this tiny little ounce, I don't know, ounce, and it's like this. And so nothing can pass through because everything's like backing up and I could feel it backing up, you know, your pouch is sewed like to right here somewhere. So it's like really high up there. So everything was just backing up and I would just throw up. It was natural. It just came up on its own. So my surgeon said, okay, you need to go in and get an endoscopy, which is where they go down your throat. They put you to sleep. Um, not anesthesia sleep, but like a deep sleep to where you don't know what's going on. and You, you really don't remember anything. Um, and they put a tube down your throat and they go in with this little balloon and they dilate your pouch, which means they expand it to make it larger so that you can actually swallow water and it goes down. And every time I'd have to have that done, I'd have to keep being on liquids for another week, clear liquids for a week. I could never migrate or move on to the next phase of like mush or solid foods. I'd always have to start over. So I never got to the um, mush stage until roughly two months, out, like a, eight, a month and a half, I think, after my surgery. So I was on clear liquids for about a month and a half. And I had to have four endoscopies. Because I had to have four endoscopies, I was extremely dehydrated from throwing up water on a constant basis. Um, sometimes it takes the first time and sometimes you have to go back in for several. But I will tell you that those do not hurt. So if you have to have that done, it's nothing to worry about. It's a one day thing. It's a couple hours in and out and you're gone. You go home, you sleep the day through and you should be okay. And then you just take it easy. But um. Yeah, so that happened four times. Um, kidney stones run in my family, so my body trying to adjust to losing all of that, um, sorry, all of that weight apparently caused my body to go into shock and kidney stones formed in my kidneys <laughs> and were released. So I had kidney stones at two months. Well, I didn't know what it was because I've never had kidney stones before. My sister had had it, and my dad had had it, and like sev several family members have had it. Okay, so they're like, well, that sounds like kidney stones, but you know, gallbladder is a very common thing that you have to have removed after gastric bypass surgery. In fact, I think it's like 75 to 80 percent of people have to have them removed. Some of them just get them removed like right when they go in for surgery. The doctors choose to do it. Well, mine didn't, and I didn't know what was going on. They thought it was that, so but they couldn't tell, you know, until they did tests. So I was in the ER for, well, I was admitted once for dehydration for two days. Um, another time I went in and I was in for the, you know, emergency for my, um, go on, get, hey, go, for uh, my kidney stones, which they thought was my gallbladder. Well, they went in to do my gallbladder. At the same time that they went in to check for my gallbladder to make sure there wasn't anything wrong with it, 
they checked to make sure I didn't have a hernia. So basically, they probed through my intestines completely while I was under. They did a second endoscopy or I mean a third endoscopy at the time, or fourth endoscopy it might have been, actually I think it was my fourth. And apparently my gallbladder wasn't functioning, but they didn't realize I had kidney stones because they can't tell when they're in there that you have kidney stones, so that's not what they were looking for. So they removed my gallbladder. I went home and kidney, this pain started happening again and I was like, what? Well, turns out I had kidney stones again. So I've since, in the last two and a half years, had kidney stones six times. Um, but again, I say not everybody gets kidney stones after gastric bypass surgery. It is a very, very, very highly common thing in my family. Now I didn't have anything wrong with me before surgery other than the fact that I was overweight, unhealthy, and I had PCOS. Okay. So that's basically it. PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome, kind of keeps you from having kids, um, or it's hard to get pregnant. But anyway, so that I believe is gone. Um, my friend had it too and it's gone. You know, there's a lot of good that came out of this gastric bypass surgery. And given the fact that I've had all of these complications, uh, people are like, and you still have the surgery? Yeah, I would. 100%. No doubt I would have the surgery again if I had the choice knowing what I was going to go through, I would do it. Um, I feel like it made me a stronger person. It made me go. You're being annoying. Sorry. Um, I feel like it made me a stronger person. It made me understand myself a little bit better. I wish I would have gone through this knowing, you know, that my support group wasn't going to be there for me other than you guys, because that would have been a significant thing for me to have somebody around here in my area that I could actually talk to you and, you know, call if I had something going on. But thankfully I had YouTube and that is why I am so thankful for you guys. But anyhow, that was for, um, this girl, I can't remember her name, but she's new and she just got her surgery date. So that is the information that you wanted to know. I hope that helps you. Um, also, uh, just a quick update. I'm now able to go to the gym. I can do light uh, workouts. Sable, stop it. I can do light workouts. Um, and oh, I'm, I bought a Victoria's Secret bra. I'm a double D right now. But I think I'm going to stay a double D. I don't know. Um, and that's okay. That's fine with me. Um, but they still haven't dropped, so they're like way up here. But um, I just bought one for now because some of my clothes, I have to wear some kind of bra, otherwise it just looks weird. Um, so they said that's fine. Just don't wear it all day, which I'm not. Just when you go out. Um, and don't sleep in it, obviously. Yeah, duh. Um, and that's it for now. I will talk to you guys soon. Alright, bye.